In the day's other headlines, a small Texas town faced the aftermath of a tornado that killed four people and ripped apart homes and businesses. At least one twister tore through Matador last night, a town of 570 people about 70 miles from Lubbock. Daylight brought the damage into focus, a mile-long stretch of smashed buildings and wrecked vehicles. Damage crews crawled over piles of debris. The storm front also spewed hail the size of softballs and winds gusting near 100 miles an hour. Tropical Storm Brett is closing in on the islands of the Eastern Caribbean tonight. Officials in Dominica, Martinique and St. Lucia issued warnings today as they braced for heavy rain, landslides and flooding. The islands have also suspended public transportation and closed airports and schools. President Biden today defended calling China's President Xi Jinping a dictator. His comment earlier this week came after Secretary of State Antony Blinken had met with Xi in Beijing. But at a White House news conference today, the president said his words will not undermine chances of better relations. We had an incident that uh, caused uh, some, uh, some confusion, you might say. But, President, but the Secretary Blinken had a great trip to China. I expect to be meeting with President Xi sometime in the future, in the near term, and uh, I don't think it's had any real consequence. The president went on to say that his blunt talk is, quote, just not something I'm going to change very much. Meantime, Beijing filed a formal protest. It said the U.S. should act to undo the damage or bear all of the consequences. In the war in Ukraine, an explosion damaged a key bridge linking Crimea to occupied parts of southern Ukraine. The Changar Bridge serves as an important supply link for Russian forces facing a Ukrainian counteroffensive. The damage left a gaping hole in the bridge. The Russians blamed missiles fired by Ukraine's army. They said repairs could take several weeks. A court in Moscow has denied an appeal by Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich to end his pretrial detention. He's been held since late March on charges of espionage. Today, he appeared in court behind a glass barrier and smiled to reporters. Afterward, the U.S. ambassador to Russia denounced what she called hostage diplomacy. This was a procedural hearing appealing the conditions of his continued detention, and we were extremely disappointed by the denial uh, of his appeal. He is an innocent journalist who was carrying out journalistic activities and has been wrongfully detained. Today's ruling means Gershkovich must stay in detention until at least late August while he awaits trial. And back in this country, Wall Street turned in a mixed performance after central banks in England, Norway, Switzerland and Turkey raised interest rates. The Dow Jones Industrial Average lost a fraction of a percent to close at 33,946. The Nasdaq rose 128 points or 1 percent. The S&P 500 added 16. Still to come on the news hour, former Texas Congressman Will Hurd becomes the latest Republican to launch a bid for the White House. People brought to the U.S. illegally as children share their hopes and fears ahead of a court ruling. And a CIA officer reflects on his long career in a new book. This is the PBS NewsHour from WETA Studios in Washington and in the West from the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism at Arizona State University.